So uh, thank you to all the speakers. I'd like to invite them all now onto the stage so we can have our, kind of our group discussion. So any questions, we'll try and take them in groups before presenting them to the panel. So we have two questions down here, uh, and one, so if we take these three. Hello there, Armin Sprecher, MSF. My question's for Benjamin, and I'd like to follow up on what Claire asked earlier. Uh, yes, human beings are much better image processors than most automated systems, but some of them are not too bad, like neural networks, if they have a good training set. You had mentioned how you were gonna think about combining your data with other systems. Have you considered actually using the data that you're generating as a training set for automated systems? And what do you think the potential for that is? Great. Uh, this question here. Yeah, thank you, uh, Kieran, MSF. Um, Nell, you mentioned uh, that missing maps has helped for, for population counts. But actually, this is not a question necessarily for Nell. It could be for Ben or for anyone else. Um, thinking about the problems with clouds and other and, and recognizing makeshift houses and so forth. Um, and the fact that in the recent years we've heard uh, mapping being used for estimate, you know, rapid estimation of population. Uh, where are we now with this? Is this getting better? Are we now actually, do you feel that we're now able to make really quite more, more reliable estimate, estimations of population counts? Because again, we're hearing yesterday that that's often a really big challenge for all of our planning of our interventions. We just don't know the population. So are, are we improving? Uh, and, and is mapping going to be the solution? And we have a third question here. Just in the oh, fourth, fifth row. Missing um, maps. Um, my question is for Aziat. You talked about the operational costs of the SMS system, but have you got any data on? any savings made possible in the overall uh, operational costs of those health centers um, with uh, improved reporting? So thank you, so I think the first question was addressed to Ben. Okay, so yes, in the end I also mentioned like a project where we want to use this as a training data source and just also use neural networks. The thing with neural networks is that we need a, need a really large training data set. That's the advantage we have now with map swipe data, that we have enough data to do so. The mm, problematic thing is that map swipe training data is quite not as detailed as you may want to have it. Like you would like to have a building outline that would be the perfect training data. So the, yeah, the final steps would be the use map swipe, use open street map data, combine both, and then train your neural network. Yeah. Thank you, I think the second question was related to better population estimates. Um, Would you like to yeah. go or should I? No, I mean, I, I, as part of the study, the participants, including epidemiologists, commented that, that they felt it improved the population estimates, but I would have to defer whether it actually has to uh, someone with more mm. expertise. Mm. I don't know if anyone... Mm. Yeah, so maybe what I also can say to this topic is that in the first step, it's good to have the building outlines, and then we can use this to estimate the population, but I think it's we cannot do it really good without having data directly coming from the field to really calibrate those models. And so that's why only using the shape of the building or the, the area, it's maybe not enough to have really like the detailed population information we would like to have. And the third question associated with the operational cost of the SMS for Ziad. Right. I was, I was hoping either I would have your eye, eye contact <laughs> or someone would ask me a question so I can follow up on it. Uh, I could see my colleague who wasn't satisfied my, with my answer too. Um, so the, the, the cost, uh, just to, 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 to explain it again, so we had the cost for um, the equipment itself, so it was approximately $40,000, and then we have the monthly cost for um, operations in terms of SMSs, and that was le less than $1,000 a month. We have done a comparison uh, in terms of operations uh, to the traditional system, 
uh, which is sending the papers with uh, motorcycles or moto taxi. And we have done uh, the estimates. I don't have it on the top of my head right now, but it was approximately three times much more expensive with the moto taxi to send these uh, papers every week, depending on the distance and, <coughs> excuse me, and if it's a raining season or not as well. So there was a variation. And whether the paper will arrive or not, also if the roads, uh, the, the motor can actually drive through these roads or not, the security situation. So we have done a comparison, but I don't have like the data on the top of my head right now. So yes, we have done that. Um, can I take the chance to have, while I'm having the baton of the microphone right now? Okay. <laughs> For ma the malaria question, I made a follow-up uh, with my colleagues, uh, with Maya regarding the malaria. In fact, right now, uh, yes, I can see it, thanks. Um, there is, a, there is a, a trial right now regarding malaria for the malaria season. But as I mentioned at the beginning, we have used the M for this pilot that we have presented the data that we have used uh, the um, requirement of MOH uh, for the diseases. But MSF is doing something right now regarding the malaria to be tested using this system as well. Are you satisfied? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> You cannot upset an MSF person in the room. <laughs> <laughs> Are there any further questions? Uh, let's take in groups. We have the lady there, um, this gentleman here, and a lady a bit further back. So if you take those three. I will start, sorry, yes, start first lady. So this is a question for Ziad. Uh, my name is Janet. And sorry, can you hold the microphone closer? Oh, sure, can you hear me? <laughs> Okay, it's a question for Ziad. I'm Janet with MSF France. Um, I was involved in coordinating a similar mobile surveillance project in DRC, not with MSF, with another NGO. And there uh, we had similar successful results in the pilot period in terms of completeness and accuracy. But then over t a period of about two years, we considered the project a failure partially because there was um, a lot of population displacement, displacement of the agents who were reporting and violence and uh, actually a lot of the agents who were reporting lost their phones or uh, there were problems with signal. Uh, given that you're implementing in CAR and it's a place that also suffers from displacement and conflict and sometimes unpredictable, unpredictably, um, have you guys planned for that? And what were some of, if so, what were some of the solutions you came up with to overcome the, the possible challenge of people getting displaced and the system falling down? It's a very good question. Oh. Sorry, can we wait till we... I'm sorry. The Don't worry. <laughs> uh, sorry, this question here. Hi, my name is Kevin Tang. Uh, I'm a master's student at the London School of Hygiene and Tropical Medicine studying public health and geographic information systems. Uh, my question is for Isidoro. Um, is um, my question is about the future of, of mapping. Um, so as of right now, it seems like the data is being collected and then being analyzed, or platforms are being built outside of the countries that are being used in and then being implemented within the countries themselves. Do you think in the future there is the capacity for countries to be able to collect their own data through the Ministry of Health, um, process it within the Ministry of Health, and then implement it on the national level? Uh, as these people know the country in a better context and they're, I mean, they're locals, they know it better. Thank you. And then we had a third question towards the pack. Yeah. I, I, I just wanted to know, because a lot of the projects seem very complementary, and I would like to know, if is this are you finding out that all of you had these projects here, or is there is, <laughs> is there any, uh, has there been any back information before so that there can be a, a, a more of a, collab a collaborative approach at, at different stages of the projects? Thank you. Uh, so we can go back to the first question, Ziad. Um, what we're we looking at? Uh, yes. Have you looked at um, future-proofing the system? Okay. Um, if I understood you correctly, it's, it's about sustainability, and especially if the system would be tested in a time of crisis. Um, in retrospect, we saw that when the staff are busy, uh, for example, when there is a vaccination campaign. Um, the paper reporting went really down and uh, the SMS went a little bit down, but then they can actually submit their reports over the weekend or at night because they just have to send it by SMS. Um, in terms of um, crisis, I think if there is no cell network, this would be a challenge 
before we, we, we think about the staff themselves, what happened to them. Um, in terms of costs, um, you need to refill these um, uh, cell phones with a credit, and uh, we have used Fleet, but also we have discussed that to have it toll free. So even if they don't have a credit on their cell phone, they can still send to a, a cell phone number. Uh, but it hasn't been tested, but has been discussed, should there be a handover to the MOH, then uh, there is no need to manage the finance of refilling the credit or the fleet as well. So they can send an SMS to a number that is paid, a bill will be paid by MOH. Um, so on the top of my head, I can answer this way, but in terms of discussion for the future, in terms of crisis, there hasn't been um, a discussion about it. Uh, but I think if there will be um, a crisis, that, that's where the system will be tested as well. Thank you. The next question was about whether there was the capacity within the Ministry of Health in Sierra Leone to push this project forward. Yeah, th thanks for the question. Um, yeah, actually, the, this whole approach, one of the main uh, pillars of the whole approach was to, to build capacity and to make sure that, uh, that this uh, is something sustainable and that they can continue in the future. The mapping was done with them, that the, the validation from the field was done from, from MOH. Uh, the dashboard was developed always in continuous collaboration with them, listening to what they would like to have. Uh, we are trying to, to train them so they can be completely independent in the, in the use of, of the dashboard. Our, our also approach with the API system, the main point is like we can leave capacity there and we are not only training him, but also all the other uh, district surveillance officers in, in that district. So yeah, indeed, uh, one of the main uh, pillars of the intervention is uh, building capacity and trying to ensure sustainability in the long term. And the final question was about uh, whether people talk to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so who was aware of the other's projects prior to this, oh, knowing about this session? Yeah, well, um, we, we <laughs> knew. I've, I've heard and I've been told about this approach with the, with the SMS system. Uh, the thing is, like again, the MOH uh, was in collaboration with other organizations at the national level, and they deployed this uh, this other system I was I was talking about. But indeed, we've been trying to explore other possibilities, and maybe not enough, and maybe there should be more communication. Acknowledge that, and that's why we are here. <laughs> <laughs> Any further questions? Uh, we have one at the back um, and one right on the back row. And we'll just take those two. Yeah, Mit Philips, MSF. So my question is about the use of the data for the decision making. So the whole idea is about getting um, earlier detection and less undetected outbreaks, for example. So did you measure that also in in a, in a way? If it's if uh, the decisions were taken more swiftly, if the response was given more swiftly. So, and uh, at what level the decision is taking? Because routine surveillance, as you described, it is going up to the district and then to the national level, but I'm, I'm not clear at what level the decision will be triggered by this data. Thank you, and there was one right on the back. Hello, uh, David, MSF Sweden Innovation Unit. Um, I was wondering a bit, um, all the tools and systems that you are presenting, I mean, they are mainly for us, to be able to have a better overview on, on to be better prepared, to, better, to have better information on where to go and what to do. I was wondering, is there any thoughts about the next step on how uh, the population themselves uh, could benefit um, from all this information uh, that we are uh, gathering? I mean, we know that people are having more and more access to mobile phones and technologies in the most remote areas in the world. So, I have a feeling sometimes that it's very interesting for us and it's very important, uh, but it's like we are looking from very high up, uh, collecting what we need for our, for our uh, activities to be better. But is there a future thinking on how uh, people having uh, mobile phones themselves, how they could use or benefit from, from all the, the activities that we are doing? 
So, yep, to open that up to the panels, we have um, whether the data that was collected at the health facility level was used for decision making. So, um, yeah, I think it's to you two at the end, I think. Want to start? <laughs> sure. <laughs> um, so the, um, the in the in the PAP project, it was really a very um, close um, uh, partnership with the MOH on a province level, and uh, the decision was made between the uh, the supervisor of the Prefecture Sanitaire or the MOH local office and the MSF office with the medical coordinator in particular. So there was a lot of um, exchange of information and uh, communication that about what to do when there are certain cases, especially if it's, it requires any Im action, immediate action. So this was something done on a continuous basis that to uh, report the data. And that's why also the GIS um, visual map has been developed by MSF as well. It was very helpful to really see on the spot what's happening in terms of cases and death. So I would say that it was managed case by case. It depends on the types of diseases as well. So this was done between the uh, MOH local office in Mambari Kadi and the MSF. Regarding the component of transmitting the data from the province to the uh, capital city, it's outside, it was not part of this project because uh, MSF is not really about surveillance. The action as a humanitarian organization is action oriented. So that's why the focus was always on the healthcare center to the main office in the province. Um. Uh, we have to wrap up very shortly, so if you have a very quick response. Uh, yeah, well, for us, that was the, ma the main point, no? information for action. And actually, we were meeting every Monday, s l having a look at the dashboard, the data that we have collected, and seeing if there was any uh, exceedance. And from there, we would go to the map, identify where that was clustering, and then try to follow up with the phone and visiting if it, if it was needed. So, yeah. And the decision was always making at the district level. Okay, so unfortunately we're out of time, but I'd like to thank the panel members again for their uh, presentations and their great discussion. Thank you.